Number seven ministries. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news. Hello, welcome to number seven ministries Christian outreach. Today's short sermon that is called he that spareth not the rod. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 24 he that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth his son or him chasteneth him be times. And be times is Old English or King James Version for many times. And the Bible is saying if you are a parent, regardless of your situation, whether you are married, whether you're divorced, whether you're single, it doesn't matter. If you are a parent, if you are a mother and a father, if you spare the rod, the Bible is saying you hate your child. It don't matter what you believe. The Bible has been proven time and time to be true. The Bible has been proven to work in my life, and I encourage you to find out for your own self if the Bible works. This is the thing. You have a lot of parents nowadays, both mothers and fathers, saying, we don't believe in spanking our children. We believe in being their friend. We like to be their friend. We don't want to spank them. We don't want to be harsh to them. We don't want to discourage them. We want to love them. Well, the Bible is telling us how to love them with the rod. And when you give the child the rod, not out of anger, but in self-control, in love, you're giving the child mercy because you're stopping him from committing future offenses. This is the thing. You cannot be the child's friend. If you are his friend, you are cheating him. You are robbing him from his only opportunity to have a parent. He's going to have many friends in his life that are going to come and go, but he's only going to have one opportunity to have a parent in his life. And you cannot be that child's friend. You can only be the role that God established for that relationship, and that is to be a godly Christian parent. And now this is the thing. The need to even spank the child can be completely altogether avoided if the child is receiving what he's supposed to be receiving. In other words, yeah, the child might do something crazy, and yeah, you should spank him afterwards, but why is the child doing something crazy in the first place? Is it because the parent's not doing his job in the first place? What am I saying? I'm saying there are a few simple things that a, a child is entitled to have. According to God, the child is entitled to have a parent who's going to give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. A child is entitled to have a parent that is going to love him. A child is entitled to have a parent that is going to give him attention. And a child is entitled to have a parent that is going to give him discipline. And if you remove any of those, you are going to have a Chucky. You're going to have a little poltergeist on your hand. You're going to have a little demon child. And he's not going to respect the parent if he doesn't get discipline. He's not going to respect the parent if he doesn't get attention. He's not going to get respect the parent if he doesn't get love. There needs to be a flow and a balance. I had this lady that I was taking care of. The point is she had a 12-year-old son. We'll name him Charlie. And while I was taking care of Charlie's mother, Charlie was in the across the hall and he was running around. If that was my child, he would be right next to me with all the kidnappers and all the rapers and molesters and all the crazy things that take place in the world. That child would be right next to me. He would not be running across the hall doing God knows what. And so... As I'm taking care of the mother, I hear this screeching noise. And I look over the mother to look at little Charlie. And I'm going to say he's about 12 years old. And I hear Charlie making this loud screeching noise. And his cheek is smeared up the, against this glass window. And it's screeching all the way down this glass window. Well, Charlie 
had took the sanitizer, the, the sanitizer lotion, and completely emptied the entire bottle all over his hair. He had a whole entire bottle of sanitizer lotion just dripping down his face on his shirt. His hands were covered. His, arm, his hair looked like he used a bunch of spike gel. And he's smashing his cheek down the window. And I'm waiting for the mother to completely blow up. I'm waiting for her to flip the desk over and say, get over here, Charlie. What is wrong with you? Or if, if the, the parent doesn't believe in yelling, it's, uh, give the child that look, that look that she's an authority, that she is the mother, she's the parent, and Charlie is supposed to listen to her. I didn't see none of that. The only thing she did is smile and she turned back around and said, kids will be kids. I, I didn't even know how to respond. I, I lost for words. This is the thing is that mother is cheating that child. She's destroying him. She's raising up a little Hitler. She's going to, she's going to raise a tyrant. And eventually, if, if, she, if that little Charlie is not going to respect the authority of his mother and has no fear of being disciplined or punished in any way, shape, or form, it will be a matter of time before little Charlie gets arrested. He's not going to respect the uh, teachers. He's not going to respect the pastor. He's not going to respect the police officer. He's not going to respect anyone at all who tells them anything what to do and remember this this is why there's so many rebellious people in the church and out of the church they don't want to be told what to do they don't want to be told that they're sinning they don't want to be told about the word of god because they're rebellious they've never been trained they don't know the order to follow a leader and remember god established leaders to be over us, to have authority, not because they hate us, not because they want to oppress us, but because they love us and because God gifted them and equipped them with tools for our own good. And when we rebel against that, we become like Lucifer. And that's what parents, a lot of parents nowadays are raising up little Lucifers running around. We need to fast and pray for these children and we need to fast and pray that these parents go back to the foundation of parenting and it's in the Bible it tells us how to raise our children the next Bible verse that I would like to read is Matthew chapter 15 verse 14 it says let them alone they are blind leaders of the blind and if the blind lead the blind they both shall fall into the ditch the reason why I'm reading that Bible verse is because you have blind parents that haven't had parents. You have parents that are parenting who've never had the proper parenting. It's like a personal trainer in the gym trying to teach someone how the, the proper techniques of working out, but they've never been taught the proper ways to work out. They don't even know the uh, proper form. They don't even know which exercises work, which muscle, and now they're trying to teach someone else. That's what you have in parenting today. And now, unfortunately, the, the dominant parents of America and probably throughout the world is not the actual parent. It's video games. It's cable TV. It's cartoons. It's everything under the sun but the parents. And a lot of times the parents are lazy. And that's what it boils down to. They're lazy. And they will put the child to be a zombie in front of the video game and the, and the TV and because they don't they don't want the burden of being a parent which is truly a blessing from God and they will allow the the something else to raise their own child we need to repent of those sins we need to start loving the children give them the rod I will tell you when I received the rod when I was in school before they took out spanking in the school system before they removed the authority and power that God gave the teachers in the school system that was founded on Christian principles I remember being in, in line standing and waiting for my meal and I think I was pulling the girl's hair in front of me. I don't remember what I was doing. I was in first grade. I remember what happened, the consequences though. And I remember going into the principal's office. He called me into the principal's office. And he, I remember him teaching me something about planting seeds. And when the seeds grew up, they would produce good trees or bad trees. Actually, to be honest, what that man told me, it went way over my head at that time. He tried to repeat it. And he was, this is the thing. 
the principal did not just spank me. He actually was trying to teach me something before he spanked me. And it, that let me know that, that that principal, his name was Mr. Manley. He had a paddle about this long. It had holes in it. I don't know if that was for aerodynamics or what. And it had a, a black duct tape grip on it. And I remember before he spanked me, he was trying to teach me. And that let me know that he didn't hate me. I never had the feeling when that, that principal spanked me with a, a heinous paddle. I mean, a heinous paddle. I never had the feeling that that principal hated me. I actually had the opposite feeling. I had the feeling that he actually loved me. I had the feeling that he actually cared me, cared for me. And we're cheating the children today. We need to give them what they are entitled to, a good Christian godly parent. Thank God for Mr. Manley. Man, he's a dying breed in today's nation. I want to read this last Bible verse, and I'm going to close with this. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, and, it sa and he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like a little child, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. We need to go back to the innocence of being a child. As we get older, we become prideful. We become hard-hearted. We get hurt, and our heart gets calloused. And because of that, we as a Christian, we need the Lord to spank us when we step out of line. And when he spanks us, he's not going to spare the rod. The Bible says he chastens every child that he receives as a father out of love. And God is not going to spare the rod in our life. And if you are receiving a spiritual spanking from the good Lord, realize that he's doing it because he loves you not because he hates you. We need to go back to the innocence as a child. There are certain children that you don't even have to spank them. If they just know, if they just know that they're displeasing their father, that is just about almost enough punishment for the child because he's that sensitive to how the father receives him. He's that concerned that he has his daddy's approval. We need to become sensitive to our father in heaven. No, we should not obey him because we know he's going to give us the rod. We, we should just want to please him. We should develop into that spiritual maturity that we do everything in our power to please our heavenly father. God bless you and have a wonderful day.